In this video, you'll learn what the P-E ratio is, how to calculate it, why it is important, the different types of P-E ratios, and its limitations. The P-E ratio, or price to earnings ratio, is a way to measure how much investors are willing to pay for a dollar of a company's earnings or profit. It's a commonly used metric to evaluate the value of a company's stock and is calculated by dividing the current market price of the stock by its earnings per share. Imagine it like this. If a company's stock is selling for $100 per share and its earnings per share for the past year was $5, then the P-E ratio would be 20. This means investors are willing to pay $20 for every $1 of earnings. You can find the P-E ratio for any profitable company by simply searching on Google. For example, here's the P-E ratio for Apple stock. Next, let's understand the types of P-E ratios. There are primarily two types of P-E ratios that investors use to assess the value of a stock, the trailing P-E and the forward P-E. Each type provides different insights into a company's valuation and potential future performance. The trailing P-E ratio is the most commonly used variant and is calculated by dividing the current stock price by the total earnings per share over the past 12 months. This ratio uses actual earnings data, making it a factual representation of what the company has achieved in terms of earnings. However, its backward-looking nature means it may not accurately reflect the company's future earnings potential. In contrast, the forward P-E ratio is calculated by dividing the current stock price by the projected earnings per share for the next 12 months. This ratio is based on earnings forecasts, either by analysts or the company itself. Since it's looking ahead, the forward P-E can offer insights into the company's expected growth and performance. However, because it relies on estimates, it's subject to the accuracy of those predictions. Using the forward P-E ratio is akin to navigating with a forecast. It's based on expected conditions that may or may not come to pass. Why is the P-E ratio important? Market expectations. The P-E ratio serves as a barometer for measuring market sentiment and expectations. Companies with high P-E ratios are often seen as growth stocks with the potential for high earnings growth, whereas those with low P-E ratios might be viewed as undervalued or as having stable but slower growth prospects. This distinction is crucial for investors looking to align their investments with their risk tolerance and investment goals. Comparative Analysis one of the P-E ratio's greatest strengths is its utility in comparing companies within the same industry. Because industries can have different average P-E ratios, comparing companies within the same sector can provide insights into which ones are more favorably valued based on their earnings. This comparative analysis helps investors make informed decisions by identifying potentially undervalued stocks or those with growth potential. Investment Strategy Incorporating the P-E ratio into your investment strategy can help in diversifying your portfolio and managing risk. For instance, investors seeking stable returns might lean towards companies with lower P-E ratios, indicating mature businesses with steady earnings. On the other hand, those seeking growth and are willing to accept higher risk might opt for companies with higher P-E ratios, anticipating future earnings growth. Next, let's look at the limitations of the P-E ratio, industry and sector variations. The P-E ratio can vary significantly across different industries and sectors due to varying growth prospects, risk levels and business models. High growth industries such as technology often have higher average P-E ratios compared to more stable slow growth sectors like utilities. Investors should be cautious when comparing P-E ratios across industries as what constitutes a high or low P-E ratio can differ greatly. Market conditions. The broader market environment can also impact P-E ratios. During bull markets, increased investor optimism can drive up P-E ratios while bear markets might lead to lower P-E ratios due to pessimism and risk aversion. These fluctuations may not always reflect the fundamental value of companies, making it crucial to consider market trends and economic conditions when interpreting P-E ratios. Growth expectations. A high P-E ratio might not always signal an overvalued stock. It could also indicate that investors expect 
high future growth. Conversely, a low P.E. ratio doesn't always mean a stock is undervalued. It might reflect low growth prospects or inherent risks. Investors need to delve deeper into why a P.E. ratio is high or low, examining factors like industry trends, competitive advantages, and future earnings potential. Not suitable for all companies. The P.E. ratio is less useful for evaluating companies with negative earnings, since this results in a negative P.E. ratio, or for those in sectors where earnings are not the primary driver of value such as real estate. In these cases, alternative metrics like price to sales or price to book might provide better insights. In summary, the P.E. ratio can give you a quick snapshot of how a stock is valued relative to its earnings but it's best used as part of a broader analysis rather than a single decision-making tool. To refine your ability to evaluate investment opportunities further, we encourage you to explore the price earnings to growth or PEG ratio in our next video. The PEG ratio builds on the PE ratio by considering growth, offering a more nuanced view of a stock's value. Dive in to discover how combining these tools can enhance your investment strategy and lead to smarter, more informed investing decisions.